Hi guys, Dane here, and today we're going to be doing a quick review of Sharda by Douglas Adams and Gareth Roberts. And this is like a Doctor Who novel. I think Adams actually wrote the script for an episode and it became like a, a lost episode. And this is basically the novel version of that. You can definitely feel Adams is writing and it. it definitely reminded me of like, well, of Dirk Gently as well as um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But also, it's also very much Doctor Who. I don't know which Doctor it actually follows because this was like from before I you know was ever watching the show but that kind of helped because I could just imagine things how I wanted to it was also very cool that it was set in Cambridge as well and it's basically about a super powerful book I'm going to read you the blurb here inside this book is another book the strangest most important and most dangerous book in the entire universe the worshipful and ancient law of Gallifrey wields enormous power it must not be allowed to fall into the wrong hands Skagra who believes he should be god and permits himself only two smiles per day most definitely has the wrong hands Beware Skagra, beware the sphere, beware Sharda. So I'm going to go through and check out some of my highlights. So uh, we have this human character called Chris and there's this great line. Chris had never shouted at a book before, except of course Jonathan Livingston Siegel. And then there's a character called Claire Kitely who is like Chris's love interest I guess. I kept thinking of her in my head as Kira Knightley. Oh, she's, So she's talking about when she'd first arrived at Cambridge and what the boys were like. As they'd got to know her, the ice had thawed. All of them had come to relax around her, at least a little, apart from Chris, whose face could not hide a micro-expression of terror whenever he first encountered her. And that was peculiarly one of the reasons why Claire liked him so much. He was clumsy and gauche. You weren't supposed to find that sexy, but Claire loved doing things you weren't supposed to, like coming from a council flat and becoming a top scientist. So she did. Okay, then the Doctor and Romana, who I believe is his, like, his, his assistant in this, they're hunting for a book and we get some of these different titles. Uh, but the worshipful and ancient lore of Gallifrey was not among them, but they found Roger's Thesaurus, the British Book of Wildlife and Colour, Alternative Beetlejuice, which I believe is a reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide series, The Time Machine, Wuthering Heights, Tandoori Chicken for starters, and Chariots of the Gods. And then we have this old, old Time Lord who's also a professor, and uh, it says, The professor tutted and drummed his fingers against his temples. Oh, I can't remember. Oh dear, I've got a memory like... Oh, what's, what's it I've got a memory like? What's that thing you strain rice with? Nice little bit of irony there. And then Chris is on his bike and we get this little passage. His head was so full of thoughts about the book that he nearly collided with another cyclist. He rang his bell angrily at the bloke who was pedalling furiously in the other direction. In fact, thought Chris, it was very hard to ring a bicycle bell angrily. However hard you tinged it, it sounded bright and cheery. Very true. I don't really like bikes, I never ride them. I actually am like one of the few people in the world who has forgotten how to ride a bike. They can't really go to the Time Lords about this missing book because the book is so powerful that the Time Lords might use a scorched earth policy and basically destroy the earth to stop the book from getting out. And then Skagra, the bad guy, gets his hands on the book and it says, Skagra positioned the book gently behind the vacuum bubble shield of his book collection. He hated the thought of hands, even his own, touching any book, what with all their grease and bacteria and animal warmth contaminating their pristine pages. We all know someone like that. And then he gets the ship to read the book to him. It says, Squiggle, 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 the ship said, enunciating every syllable with the gravitas required of the moment. Squiggle, line, squiggle, squiggle, line, squiggle, squiggle, wavy line. Though I suppose that could be a squiggle. Skagra leapt from the comfort pod. What is the meaning of this? Your magnificence has, as usual, pinpointed the problem with unerring accuracy, my lord, said the ship. The eye stalk flexed uneasy over the open book which Skagra saw was covered in arcane symbols. I am programmed to translate every language and alphabet in the universe, and I have absolutely no idea what this means. Then the Doctor dies. We know he's not going to stay dead. I was actually expect expecting him to be like resurrected in one of his reincarnations, but that didn't happen actually, so kind of surprised me on that front. And then uh, Chris, Romana, and K9 is, is in here as well, and they all get teleported, and, it's, and uh, <laughs> there's a silence. Chris was never loath to take the opportunity to fill a silence. Do you know, I was meant to be delivering a paper to the Physics Society next week. Chris nodded, finally disproving the possibility of teleportation. He shrugged. Well, I can always deliver it the week after. Means a complete rewrite, though. The irony there, of course, being because he just teleported. Someone finds Bonnie Tyler's greatest hits, and it's like Claire's at a loss. She doesn't understand why somebody would bother to do that. And anyway, Bonnie Tyler only has like two great two songs. But it's because it's from the future. It's a cassette of Bonnie Tyler from the future. I love this quote here from Claire as well. She assumed that Gallifrey was a Greek island or somewhere similar. And then the Doctor 
basically quotes Allen Ginsberg from uh, Howl. He says, I, st- I just saw the best minds of this generation destroyed by the madness of a rampant Krag. No, Doctor, it's... I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, ha- starving, hysterical, naked, wandering through the Negro streets at dawn looking for an angry fix. I think that's how it starts. And then, uh, basically, they convince this ship that everybody's dead. And that that's fine. The ship doesn't have to try and kill the Doctor, because the Doctor's dead. And, um, basically, the, the ship goes through like a almost like a midlife crisis it says oh please said the ship there's no need to apologize i'm sure that all forms of life no matter what the definition of life may be must at some point be forced to consider the great abstracts of existence such as love death happiness even personal morality you doctor have opened my eyes to these questions i'm going to go through everything i have in my data store on these weighty topics and then i'm going to jolly well form some definite opinions on them so yeah, I don't want to say too much more because I don't want this review to be super long, but basically why I wanted to do this review is to communicate the fact I've had this on my shelves for ages now and I've kind of been putting it off and I really enjoyed it. It was actually really easy to read as well because the chapters are super short, so you get a lot of pages and like sections, different sections like these where you know, you've know you got a section heading and so you really whiz through this. I'm not like a massive Doctor Who fan, uh, I, I mean I've seen most of the new series and I think I've seen most of Torchwood, but I, I wouldn't consider myself a Whovian in the way that say my, my book editor would. Uh, my, my editor I work with uh, called Pamela Harris, she's a big Doctor Who fan. But if you have like more than a passing interest in either Douglas Adams or Doctor Who, you're going to enjoy this. And to be honest, even if you enjoy like sci-fi comedy, you're going to enjoy this as well. So I gave this a pretty solid 3.75 out of 5, and I can't believe I've owned this for like three years and only just got to it. I should have got to it sooner. So there we have it. That's what I thought of Sharda by Douglas Adams and Gareth Roberts. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.